This video describes the process for incorporating Security PHA Review or SPUR information into a HAZOP study using the Conexus Open PHA software. I'm going to begin by opening a typical PHA file uh, in our desktop version of the Open PHA software. The online premium version will work exactly the same way as I'm describing here. Uh, when you open it up, you get all of the uh, information that's familiar to anyone who has facilitated or documented a PHA study in terms of study data, nodes, deviations, the worksheets for performing the PHA study itself, worksheets for LOPA, and so on. Now, uh, if I go to the PHA worksheet, in, uh, you'll see kind of a typical layout. And for those of you that are not completely familiar with Open PHA, um, we provide a superset concept for consistency where we have a large variety of information available but only show what the user wants to see. Uh, what you're looking at here is kind of a, uh, a standard or default configuration of the information that's provided for a HAZOP but we can show more, including the information for a security PHA review, which is not available by default. So if I go to study data and I click on the settings tab, this is going to uh, allow you to manipulate which parts of the superset are available for view on your worksheets. Now, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of information uh, items that are available uh, for viewing in the PHA, uh, but the ones for this session that are of interest to us are the ones that are related to uh, uh, security PHA review. So now going back to the worksheets, uh, for those of you that are familiar with security PHA review, and if you're not, uh, we have videos that are available and papers that are available that discuss the topic. What we're trying to do is determine whether causes can be created by a cyber attack, making them hackable, and whether or not safeguards can be defeated via cyber attack, making them hackable. And if all of that is true, then the entire scenario would be hackable, which means you need to either recommend a safeguard that's not hackable in order to make it inherently safe against cyber attack, or you need to design your cybersecurity safeguards uh, in order to be sufficient for the level of risk which is defined by the uh, uh, severity of the event. So now you'll see that uh, in this default worksheet I don't have the security PHA review items available. So let me go to study data and click on that column visibility. And the security PHA review items that are of interest are going to include uh, items about each cause. So is the cause hackable and is that cause scenario hackable? You see I turned those items on and then I will go over to safeguards and, and display whether or not the safeguard is hackable. Once I've changed these settings, I'm going to go ahead and save my study with those changes. Now when I go back to the PHA worksheet section you'll see that those rows are now available. So is the cause hackable? Is the safeguard hackable? Now let's go ahead and go through this analysis for uh, this particular situation. Uh, in this case I have a gas production plant that's receiving well, gas well fluids from a field through a pipeline or a production header and then we're going into a high pressure separator that's going to knock out some of the liquids. So uh, the first deviation of high pressure, it was determined that the high pressure and its consequence could be generated by the production header operating over its design limits. And the design pressure in that production header is uh, set by the basic process control system. As a matter of fact, it's set by the basic process control system of another facility. So because it's the basic process control system, we're going to say, yes, it's hackable. What makes something hackable? If it's in a device that contains a microchip, some sort of computer processor, and that computer processor is able to speak on a network with a routable protocol like IP, uh, or Modbus, then the device is hackable. 
Now, that while that cause is hackable, you look at the second cause, which says, is there an external fire in the facility of the separator? Well, you can't create a fire by a cyber attack just by itself, so we're going to go ahead and say no to that one. Now, the next thing we do is we go over to all of the safeguards for that particular cause. In this case, the safeguards against the production header operating over its design pressure include a relief valve that's going to open to the flare header. Well, a relief valve is a simple mechanical system, so it is not hackable. Now, you'll notice that when I made this change, uh, let me drop out again, you'll see that there's a message that comes up that says I am updating a reference and it asks me whether I want to update the reference or create a new item. This shows the relational database nature of the OpenPHA software. So if I make a change to the safeguard PSV 101A, it's going to change all of the instances, not just the one that I'm working on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say no, that safeguard is not hackable. Update reference. And because one of the safeguards is not hackable, we know that the entire scenario is not hackable. And then we can continue on with the other ones and say things like um, a safety instrumented function is hackable because it resides in a processor uh, with a routable protocol. Uh, control valve. Uh, as a basic process control loop, yes, that is hackable because it is in a microprocessor with a routable protocol. Uh, low pressure shutdown is a safety instrumented function, yes, that is hackable. So when you go through all the causes and determine whether they're hackable, you go through all the safeguards and determine whether they're hackable, and the logic makes a calculation as to whether or not the entire scenario is hackable. So in this example, uh, for the first two safety functions, you'll see that the scenarios are not hackable, and uh, either because the cause was not hackable or there's at least one safeguard that's not hackable. And what you're going to find is for the great preponderance of PHA scenarios, maybe greater than 90, greater than 95%, the scenarios are not hackable by cyber attack. So that means you can focus your cybersecurity resources against other scenarios that might be hackable. So this video demonstrated the process for uh, turning on the functionality in OpenPHA to do a security PHA review. As always, if you have any questions, you can always contact Connexus support at support.connexus.com or send an email to support uh, at connexus.com.